to start my class in public speaking. Okay. And I sent out 2,000 cards to wives of members of Congress and women who are officers of women's clubs, prominent women, and wives of men who are diplomats. And I went up to that classroom that morning thinking I'd find it full of women wanting to learn to speak, and there were two women there, and that's all. And so one of them was the head of a women's club, and the other one's husband was um, from California, and he was head of the diplomats in the Congress from California. And I said, well, ladies, do you want to learn to speak? And they said, yes, they did. And I said, okay, I'm here. How much did you charge them? And I, I think I charged them, uh, I've forgotten, I'll think in a few minutes how much I charged for my classes. I said, I'm here, the classroom didn't cost anything, because it was my church gave it to me. So all right. And you went to church there? That was our, the church that my husband and I went to, the Unitarian Church. So I said, well, all right, if you want to learn to speak, I, it's eight lessons. And it will cost $50 each to have the eight lessons. And I'll give you the whole course. How long was each class? And they, they met for two hours. And once a week? Once a week. So we started in, and I had my textbook there for them to use, and we started in, and both women became excellent speakers. And at the end of the course, of course, I felt naturally pretty sad going up there just to teach two women. But the woman whose husband was in the Congress said, and I will get her name in a few minutes, at the moment it's that slippery, but she said, Mrs. Butler, this is the greatest experience I have ever had since we've been in Washington. We have been here for many years, and this is terribly important. Now, she said, Eleanor Roosevelt, who is now the wife of the President of the United States, is doing all of his speaking for him. He was, had had, was a cripple, you remember, the President of the United States Roosevelt. couldn't go out, Roosevelt, couldn't go out and speak at all. And the men said to Eleanor, you will have to do his speaking for him. So she went down to New York and got a teacher to help her because her problem, as it turned out, as it turned off, was that she did not have a voice. She, the voice, her voice uh, place was lacking. And on a platform, her voice was impossible. So she went to a woman in New York who was a voice specialist, because a voice is important in speaking, but even with a good voice, you've still got to know how to learn to speak. And this teacher told her, or taught her, how to lift her voice out of where her voice belongs, up into the, into the sinuses. And it took her two solid years of hard exercises to learn how to get that voice up there. And then she had to speak in very low, slow tones, but they were pleasant tones. And she had something to say. And she began traveling all over the United States, saying it for the President of the United States. And so uh, the woman for whose husband was in the Congress said, we will um, Let's ask Mrs. Roosevelt to open up this class next year and be the guest speaker and to come as a guest. And I said, well, if you're a writer and ask her to do it, I can't do it because I'm a professional woman. And she can't do things that earn money for other people. But if you'll do it, I'll get the big room here in this church. And next January, we'll start another class. So she wrote a letter to Mrs. Roosevelt, and would she the next January be available to come up to the Unitarian Church, and we'd get the big auditorium up there, and open up Mrs. Butler's class in public speaking, and tell the women that they must learn to speak, and Mrs. Butler knows how to teach them how to speak. And Mrs. Roosevelt, wrote back and said she'd be delighted to open my class. 
And so I got out and I had it in my, in my beautiful uh, book of my life. I had that invitation that I sent out. And again, I sent that out to 2,000 people. And it was a beautiful typewritten, not a typewritten, but a beautiful invitation on a white card. Very formal looking. If you got 2,000 women, then what were you going to do with them? Well, I'll tell you what I did do. I said I didn't think for a moment 2,000 women would come. I'd be lucky if I got enough women there to have one class. But in order to find that number of women, you had to send it out to all the women. And so the following year, in January, that invitation went out, beautifully written up. And the, uh, Mrs. the woman in the Congress, whose name at the moment, I'll think of it in a minute, would be there to bring Mrs. Roosevelt in and introduce them to the class. And the class would be taught by Mrs. Jessie Haver Butler, a graduate of the public speaking class at George Washington University. And we set out the car, and we had the room engaged. And when I got there, Mrs. Roosevelt drove up to the door in her big courage, and Mrs. Uh, the lady that had invited her uh, was to introduce her. So the husband never before had a congressman's wife introduced a president's wife to a meeting. And her husband was so scared about her doing it that he brought her over to my house on Saturday night and let me give her a private lesson on what she was going to say when she introduced Mrs. Roosevelt and what she was going to say as she did it. And he heard her make that speech of introduction to be sure that it was all right. And so when we got there that morning, she was there with a corsage to give it to Mrs. Roosevelt. And every seat in that auditorium was taken. 500 women were there. And there was, a, there was a big balcony in the Unitarian Church around with seats in the balcony. So I had called up all the private schools in Washington. And at that time, there were a lot of private schools where girls came from all over the United States to get trained for college in those schools and at the same time to have the privilege of living in Washington and going to big events with the government. So they had that exciting thing of going to that school and going to big parties that were going on for the government. And so I called up the presidents of those private schools and told them I was opening up a class in public speaking on a certain day.